is a bizarre end to a tragic story. As police led high school senior Alex Rodriguez to his arraignment in court tonight, they closed the books on a grisly case that has horrified the affluent Westchester community of Somers, New York. An intense investigation by state police into the brutal slaying of 37-year-old housewife Marilyn Campanello, killed while jogging at Somers High School, led them to the 19-year-old Rodriguez, who has been a student at the school for two years. Uh, several uh, employees, faculty members of the uh, high school were interviewed, along with several students uh, at Somers High School. He was one of those students that were interviewed uh, based on the statements uh, that he made to us later on uh, and actually a confession to us we were able to conclude the case. The mother of two, while on her daily jog yesterday morning at the high school track, was stabbed repeatedly and dragged into a wooded area by the school. Police believe the student used an instrument known as a scribe. It's essentially a double steel-pointed compass used in metal shop to make circles. Only this student allegedly used it to kill. Why is not motive at all? Uh, right now, we have no uh, basic motive that we're going on. Uh, his statements have been confusing, and it would be... Uh, irresponsible right now for us to really mention the exact motive. Police say the young man has signed a written confession, but even so, they remain baffled over why he would commit such a grisly act. Reporting in Somers, New York, David Navarro, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Campanella and her family just moved to the area two months ago. She leaves behind a husband and two children, ages 9 and 6. A Long Island teenager is dead tonight, shot and killed while calling 911 for help. John Cavanaugh was afraid because he saw his mother's ex-boyfriend coming to the house. He dialed 911, but before help could arrive, both Sean and his mother's ex-boyfriend were dead. Details from Long Island correspondent Tim Fleischer. When police recorded Sean Cavanaugh's plea for help, little did any of the 9-11 dispatchers know that within seconds they would also hear the gunshots that killed Sean Cavanaugh. Sean had made that final plea from his home here in Mattituck yesterday evening when he obviously felt there was going to be serious trouble from his mother's ex-boyfriend, Manuel Morales, who suddenly appeared at the house. Sean was on the telephone with a neighbor who had called asking to speak to Sean's mother, Dolores. And he told her, um, I have to hang up, I have to call the police. Man, he's pulling into the driveway now. Sean Cavanaugh then quickly dialed 911, and on this tape recording, you can hear his final plea for help. Suddenly, the phone is dropped, and you hear the first gunshot when, as police believe, Morales killed Sean. Uh, Sean has a defense wound. Um, apparently from putting his hand up because he was shot through the finger and the same bullet um, hit him approximately at the bridge of the nose. Police believe Manuel Morales' anger was originally aimed at Sean's mother due to the breakup of their relationship. What puzzles investigators, though, is why Sean then became the victim. In fact, on the 9-11 tape recording, police were able to hear in muffled tones after Sean apparently dropped the telephone, he said, Manny, I didn't do nothing. That's when the shots were fired. I believe the whole family, including Sean, was apparently afraid of uh, Morales. I don't know if there was any direct conflict between the two or if he was just targeting the whole family. Even though police were able to arrive at the Kavanaugh home within a matter of minutes, after the call, Morales was still able to kill Sean and then turn the gun on himself. Reporting from Yapang, Tim Fleischer, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Two men are beginning long prison terms tonight for firebombing the home of Arjun, the Queens man who fought uh, drugs and has become a national symbol of a citizen fighting back. The firebombing occurred the day after Arjun went to police to report crack deals in his neighborhood. A cop assigned to guard Arjun's house after the attack was killed out front. The assassination of Officer Edward Byrne brought wide publicity to Arjun. Today in state Supreme Court, the two arsonists were brought before Justice Thomas DeMarcus. The judge said that he felt very strongly about the nature of their crime. It reminds me uh, uh, of the drug kingpins uh, in South America who, by the killing of their judges and their prosecutors, uh, have injected so much fear uh, in their community uh, that they are practically immune from prosecution. The sentences, 28-year-old Claude Johnson got 25 years to life, and 17-year-old Robert Webster got a total of 50 years to life on two counts. Arjun has now moved from south of Jamaica, and his identity has been changed in the Federal Witness Protection Program. Teddy. And a shocking crime marked tonight's beginning of Yom Kippur, the highest of the Jewish holy days. 
It's a case of arson that destroyed a Brooklyn synagogue. Tonight, the congregation had lost everything in the fire, attended Day of Atonement services in a nearby vacant synagogue, a building open to them by others during the solemn period. Security tonight was evident, police on guard in the crowd. Two young boys are charged in the destruction of the Sharia Torah synagogue last Friday night. Today, Israel's Consul General left his Manhattan office to take a look at the devastation. Someone has to find out what brought two youngsters to commit such a brutal act. You look around, it's, it's unbelievable. Cleaning up and rebuilding the synagogue is expected to start when the holy days are over. It's not known when the case of the two boys will go to court. Ernie? In a West German court, dramatic testimony on record tonight in the trial of Muhammad Ali Hamadi, charged in the 1985 hijacking of a TWA jet. Early Dirksen, the purser who became a model of courage in the ordeal, said Hamadi kicked and beat passengers. But she was not sure he killed U.S. sailor Robert Steatham. Others have identified Hamadi as the killer. ABC News, meanwhile, has obtained exclusive pictures of Hamadi in jail. If convicted, he could be sentenced to life in prison. Violence in the streets of Haiti's capital, and we have some very graphic pictures that you may not want to take a look at. The violence follows a coup on Sunday by General Prosper Avril. Here, government troops beat a protester and then shoot him dead. People have reportedly been killed in the past two days since the coup, and tonight, General Avril is appealing for calm. He ousted General Andre Nanfi. Nanfi ran Haiti for most of the two and a half years since baby Doc Duvalier was overthrown as dictator. The new leader, Avril, says that he wants democracy, but he has made no mention of free elections. In the campaign for president, the new ABC News Washington Post poll tonight puts George Bush in front of Michael Dukakis 50 to 46 percent. Both men were on the trail today to caucus in Bowling Green, Kentucky, where he proposed a medical insurance plan in which all employers would provide coverage for all employees, sharing the cost with them. He said it would help 37 million workers. And these are not people who are down and out. These are people who are working in many cases, have been working, don't have that basic health security that most of us take as a matter of course. And where is George Bush? He's visiting a flag factory today. Dukakis made a speech at Western Kentucky University. In reply, Vice President Bush's aide called the Dukakis plan socialized medicine. Well, the Vice President is back in Washington tonight after a campaign swing that took him to New Jersey and to that flag factory mentioned by his opponent. New Jersey correspondent Jay Scott has our report tonight. <laughs> If patriotism is the theme of the day, then there are worse places to be than a flag factory. George Bush stuck to the script today, which went, if flag sales are up, then patriotism must be up too. Today's keynote, Build a Better America. As I see it, two issues stand out above all the others in achieving that mission. Creating economic growth that will keep bringing jobs to all Americans, and then securing the peace for this and future generations. Not everyone agreed, though, and hecklers, including grandmothers for peace, tried but failed to disrupt the speech. The hecklers apparently didn't bother the vice president. He waited right into the crowd right after the speech. Wait a minute, here, give me a chance. Stick your hand in Bush had raised the issue of patriotism in the campaign by attacking the caucus for vetoing a Massachusetts bill requiring the Pledge of Allegiance. The caucus said the bill was unconstitutional. Some union workers at the Ann and Flag Factory resented today's appearance and said they'd vote to caucus because Republicans were not helping working folks. They feel disappointed for a few things, but we feel disappointed when we go to the supermarket and we are shot in the morning, you know, to buy the food for our families. Then we feel disappointed because we are working hard for nothing. Both candidates expect to be spending less time on the campaign trail and symbolism and more time preparing for the national debate on economics that is scheduled for Sunday. Reporting from Bloomfield, New Jersey, Jay Scott, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Coming up next here, a report is highly critical of command decisions during a New Jersey fire that killed five firefighters. Also, a team of special consultants places blame for the crisis involving our EMS ambulances. Theo and Theo's, the new word in men's fashion. Theo and Theo's for business wear, winter wear, summer wear, leather wear, sports wear, and footwear. For quality, selection, better prices, and first-class service, come to Theo and Theo's, 
3279 Stoneway Street in Astoria. Call 718-932-7290. Open seven days. Major credit cards accepted. The very important man in that limo says he's not going to pay a lot for this muffler. At Monarchy, you get quality Everlast mufflers from just $18.93 installed. Hi friends, Big Al Teresco here at the world's largest auto land in Springfield, New Jersey. And here at Auto Land, we don't monkey around. We're out to sell hundreds and hundreds of brand new 1988 leftover Chrysler's and we're making crazy incredible deals like this. Brand new 1988 Chrysler Conquest for just $249 a month. For this brand new 1988 Plymouth Reliant K for just $78 a month. Do you believe it? Just $78. So what do you do? Pick up the phone, dial 1-800-AUTO-LAND. Or better yet, come on down and let's make a deal today. It all started when my wife said, Honey, Piedmont Spares are so low. Why don't you take me along on your next fishing trip? I said, I know Piedmont Spares are always low, but your idea of hip waiters are a bunch of guys who work in trendy restaurants. Besides, you're not going to have a lot of fun to stand around watching the old pro catch all the fish. I'm Neil Padgett, president of Petland Discount, the Tri-State Area's largest chain of pet shops. Welcome to the country's wonderful world of tropical fish. And for your fish, there's nothing better than world-famous Petra products. And remember, if fish fits off, we'd ask for Petra. Now, over 50 convenient locations, all open seven days. A new report out tonight on New York's embattled emergency medical service is highly critical of EMS management. The report blames mismanagement for a summer of problems that allegedly resulted in at least two deaths. Lewis Young has the reaction now of the new head of the EMS. Public silence, the new head of the city's troubled ambulance system, met reporters with tough words and promises for reform today. EMS head Tom Doyle's statements coincided with the release of a consultant's report commissioned by the city. That report says, yes, it was mismanagement that led to this summer's ambulance shortage and crisis. Doyle says the report confirms what he found in his first weeks on the job at EMS. He says he's already started to make the changes that will prevent another crisis next year. You're telling us you're going to fix it. That's correct. That's exactly what I'm telling you. You might recall as well that EMS employees have been accused of doctoring emergency response statistics during the crisis to make the agency look better on paper. Doyle says an internal investigation is underway, and every person in the EMS communication system is being interviewed. I can tell you, after looking at statistics and things like that, that I have not found anything obvious. I will not rule anything out because the investigation is not completed at this time. Also announced today a plan to buy 60 new ambulances to act as a backup fleet for EMS. The new managers are determined to have all available crews in working ambulances at all times. If a crew brings in an ambulance in the middle of a tour that has some problems, they can go right back out in one of the reserve ambulances. The new movement at EMS brought qualified praise today from frequent agency critic Andrew Stein, the city council president, and the man ultimately in charge of it all, Mayor Koch. We did the right thing uh, in putting Doyle in and removing his predecessor. Uh, I'm sorry we didn't do it uh, sooner. You can't uh, make it better until you admit what's wrong. I think Doyle now seems to be admitting what is wrong and seems to be moving in the right direction. And if he's going to do a positive job, I'll support him 100%. So a new wrinkle in the ongoing EMS story tonight after months and months of controversy and complaints. All the top players at City Hall seem for once to be on the same wavelength. The City Hall, Lewis Young, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. The chief and other commanders of the Hackensack, New Jersey Fire Department are silent tonight in the face of heavy criticism for the decisions during a fire that killed five firemen. The International Association of Firefighters commissioned the report after the car dealership fired July 1st. The report says two firemen trapped were radioing for help that never came. If you review the tapes and if you review the transcript, you will hear those trapped people asking for help and nobody ever responds except, except somebody with a $10 scanner somewhere else finally calls in and says, you've got some people trapped. The Firefighters Association says three other firemen died needlessly. The chief allegedly did not recognize the roof structure of the burning building and failed to clear his firemen from the burning building once all civilians were accounted for.
Important medical news tonight concerning women and breast cancer. New studies show regular mammogram examinations can reduce breast cancer deaths by almost 25% among women in their 40s. The National Cancer Institute says this is the first study to confirm the benefit of mammograms to women in their 40s, while the benefit was previously known to women above age 50. The National Cancer Institute now recommends women above 40 have a mammogram every one to two years. Ernie? And coming up next here, the Mets in action tonight, hoping to reduce their magic number, which was three when the night began. And the Yankees with Tim Penn and Hopes, and now the new threat of a big shakeup. Corey McFerrin has all the sports coming up. No, I never said she comes in your closet. I don't know when I got this. What's the what? But that is where did you get it? That Answer me. Who taught you how to do this stuff? You are right. I learned it by watching you. Parents who use drugs have children who use drugs. Is the real Richard Burton revealed in this nasty new book, written by his own brother? The stars say no, as Entertainment Tonight takes you inside the story and learns what King Richard was really like in his life. Richard's values were not very good. And his legacy. It was extraordinary appeal in just the way he looked at you. Elizabeth Taylor and others tell all and expose the final truth about Richard Burton on the next Entertainment Tonight. Tonight at 7.30, right after Jeopardy, here on Channel 7. What's New York's premier shopping street? Is it Fifth Avenue? Is it Columbus Avenue? No, it's Potemkin Boulevard. That's right, 11th Avenue is Potemkin Boulevard. And with three Potemkin locations, cost-conscious consumers are making Potemkin Boulevard their street to shop. They're coming into my Dodgers, Toyotas and Mitsubishis for just $59.95 every day. An astounding array for just $59.95. Potemkin Power means poultry prices for prudent purchases on Potemkin Boulevard. Now there's a way for you to look better. The American Plastic Surgery Center specializes in cosmetic surgery for both men and women. So if you're considering cosmetic surgery for your face or body, and would like to talk with a first certified plastic surgeon, call us. At the American Plastic Surgery Center, your consultation will be confidential, and our fees are affordable. Call today for your personal consultation, 1-800-344-FACE. Here's the most valuable jewelry I've ever seen. A Medic Alert bracelet and necklace. They could save your life. This emblem would tell a medical team what they need to know about your health and give a phone number for more information. Medic Alert is a nonprofit foundation. Join now. Call 1-800-ID-ALERT. Okay, some hot and heavy rumors circulating yeah. about the Yankees. What's going on, Corey? Yeah. We've heard it all before. It's going to happen again and again. It's, it's not that hard to understand. We've all heard the story. I'm sure you've heard it by now today. Daily News reporting that George Steinbrenner set to pull the plug on who? Well, Lou Pinella and ship off Jack Clark, John Candelaria, maybe Don Mattingly, supposedly on his way in to replace sweet Lou Dallas Green, former Phillies manager and Cubs GM. No reaction yet from Green, who's returning to his Delaware home from a trip to Arizona. Response from Lou, however, tonight, just before the game, admits the timing is bad, but says little else. Uh, I don't think the timing was good, but uh, we'll see if it has any effect at all on the ball club. Uh, the important thing now is that uh, the players concentrate on playing baseball. We've got two weeks left to play, and uh, we still got a chance to win this thing. So uh, let's give it up that shot. Well, he wondered about, would it uh, distract the team? The answer tonight, the Yankees not affected at all, crushing the Orioles 7-1, to one, but they gain no ground, and the Red Sox also winners tonight. Yanks looking loose. Distractions? What distractions? Kenny Phelps having a good time here in the dugout, and why not? It's a lapper. Jack Clark, fifth inning, two men on. Remember last night, just missed taking one out to right. Does not miss here. This thing is going. And the Yanks go up 4-0, Jack the Ripper with 26 dingers. Next batter, Mr. Phelps, his mission to take one out. And there it is. Back-to-back -back home runs for Phelps' 22nd. Yanks on their way, 5-0. And on the hill, it's Rick Roden, five-hitter, fifth consecutive victory, two on, two out, ninth inning. And that's going to do it for Roden, his fifth complete game on the year, as the Yanks win 7-1. Meanwhile in Toronto, Red Sox rip and Wade Boggs hit number 200 for the year. Sixth straight season he's done that first time. 
That's been accomplished in the modern era. Red Sox cruise 13 to 2. Magic number now seven. Yanks remain five and a half back. Also clinging to slim hopes like the Yankees, the Tigers, and Milwaukee. Detroit wins tonight. Chet Lemon two on homer in the ninth. The Brewers lead California early. Well, the countdown continues for the Mets. It's Shea tonight. The magic number is down to two. Get that champagne cold. Could happen tomorrow night. David Cohn gets his 18th victory. Mets beat the Phillies 6-4. to four. A little defense for you. Barry Lyons. This guy will go through walls, in the dugouts, whatever it takes. Nice grab, Barry. And with the stick, Kevin McReynolds. Is he hot or what? This shot right here in the fourth inning is going. His second home run of the night, 25th for the year. Mets up two zip in the fourth. The curtain called the whole bit. Two innings later, now a tie game. Mookie at second. Big Mac intentionally walked, which kind of makes sense, but doesn't work out. Daryl Strawberry happens to be the National League home run leader. Says he don't walk somebody to get to me. Big Shane Raleigh, deep three-run homer. Mets win 6-4. to four. And what about Mac? There's talk about him for the MVP. What do you say, big guy? I want to go out and play baseball and try to do the best I can do. And, you know, all that other stuff comes at the end of the, the, after the season day, and I have no control over that. So, all I want to do is get to the playoffs and hopefully get to the World Series. All right. Sounds good to Mets fans. As for the Pirates, looks like they're going to win tonight. 5 1 ninth inning, so the magic number will stay at 2, but the Mets could clinch tomorrow night. Dodgers shut out the Astros 6 zip. Their magic number is now 4. Olympic action tonight, USA over Brazil. And uh, Michael Jordan signs an eight-year contract today for 25 mil. Yeah. Think he's okay That's financially <laughs> for a while? Think so. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Right. Coming up next year, Sam Champion tells us about another possible hurricane brewing. And he has our weather, too. Also, a new wildfire threatens a California town. Think about a second mortgage home equity loan. At Champion, mortgages are our only business, and nobody does it better. We offer low fixed rates for qualified homeowners. Whatever your mortgage needs, regardless of your credit background, Champion works hard to get you results, and fast, usually within a few days. Call today and apply by phone in just a matter of minutes, or ask for our free brochure. And remember, when your bank says no, Champion says yes. Hi friends, Big Al Terrestrial here at the World's Largest Auto Land in Springfield, New Jersey. At most used car lots, it's a real jungle out there. But not here at Autoland, we're making crazy deals on all quality used cars. For example, this 1987 Ford Taurus for just $125 a month. Or this 1987 Dodge Aries K for just $66 a month. That's right, just $66. So what do you do? Pick up the phone, dial 1-800-AUTOLAND. A buddy, or come on down and let's make a deal today. For just one moment and think about how you felt about your mother when you were a teenage girl. For a lot of you, I'm sure, it went very pretty thoughts. On the next Oprah Winfrey Show, these mothers and their teenage daughters doing their best to get through what's usually one of the most trying times of our lives. And mom means uh, disagreeing on everything from makeup to boys to curfews. Mothers and their teenage daughters on the next Oprah Winfrey Show. Today at 4, followed by Eyewitness News here on Channel 7. Who is HQL? Who is Bases? Once you start, you'll never stop. What is independence? Who is William Penn? The Challenge of Jeopardy! Tonight at 7, here on Channel 7. While climbing, secure figure 8 now to hold it. Motivation is the key to fighting illiteracy. Take it to the top! When taking pictures in low light, always use high-speed film. In scouting, what you read is what you do. Near San Francisco tonight, firefighters are trying to save a small town from the flames of a wildfire that has been burning now for four days. Wind-whipped flames have burned almost to the town line of Vacaville, 50 miles from San Francisco. Cattle have been terrified by the fire, but so far there are no reports of any cattle being killed. However, 500 people have been evacuated from their homes, and at least seven homes have been destroyed. The fire, which started Saturday, is blamed on arson. Cuddy? Storm Phil is off of the Yom Kippur Observance, and Sam Champion is here right now with our weather. Yeah? It's getting better, Cuddy. We're working on it anyway. We've got some uh, clouds and showers still moving across the area. 
and will have for another hour and a half, it looks like right now. Light and scattered stuff mostly, even in the thunder showers. Right now, temperature about 71 degrees. Relative humidity at 90%, a little thick outside. Relative humidity is at 29.93 and falling in the winter from the south now at about 13 miles per hour. We'll take a quick look outside at the satellite picture and find we're right on the edge of those clouds. Just about getting into the clear section, and it looks like we will make it by tomorrow. The cold front that's working through the area will probably work through and be off the coast by early in the morning. That means by your commute time, there could be one or two lingering clouds out there. We're part of this swirl of clouds. This is what re remains, you know, just the leftover of what is not once was Gilbert. Now just a little rain, and we're seeing what is left of it as it moves off the coast. If you're keeping track of other tropical situations, there is one tropical storm that just developed this afternoon in the far eastern Atlantic. Too off the picture for us to be really concerned about it right now, but it is a tropical storm Helene right now, and it is moving to the west, so we'll keep a close eye on that. Good clear skies for us. Uh, just behind that cold front, well to the good part of the country here, and some few clouds, scattered showers out that way. Some cooler air beginning to sink down into the country around Minnesota. They have some frost and freeze warnings out in effect tonight. That's a sign of some cooler air around the high pressure, but even when the high moves through and moves into the area tomorrow with some of that cooler, drier air, just edge on the uh, cooler, but definitely drier, we're not going to feel those cool temperatures until it looks like the end of the weekend. Uh, we're just not going to get that just yet because the high's going to settle in and we'll get kind of a warm before there. 80, 82 degrees across the area for tomorrow. Eventually, though, it will clear out. I think the morning, maybe one or two clouds, a touch of fog, but the day will turn out to be beautiful. Thursday looks very nice as well. Take a look at your forecast. This is the way we see it right now. A few clouds in the morning, about 72 degrees, but the rest of the day, I think it'll shape up very nicely. Break through sunshine, pleasantly warm, about 80 or 82 degrees for the high temperature. The five-day plan looks pretty nice as well. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, your forecast days, 82, 79, 78, 76. And by Sunday, I think we'll get into a little cooler pocket of air with a high temperature of 74 degrees. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Sam. Well, that about does it for us. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. And Nightline is coming up next year with Kaidi Tong, Sam Champion, Corey McFerrin, and the rest of the Eyewitness News team. I'm Rudy Anastas. Good night. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Then I said, my apples, honey. The forbidden fruit, Tinkle, Pete, James. I oh, know what he needed. A homemade apple pie. With Crisco's flaky crust, that'd help us forget her great. And I've got some apples for you.